Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of I Don't Give a Flick. I am your host, Johnny Blackburn. And alongside me this week, as always, are my partners in crime. Gary Elmore. And Scratchy Boy Steel. And Scratchy, and old, old Scratchy himself, Neil Caesar Riley, the man who needs no introduction but insists on having one. Anyways, can't get rid of this guy. Try to every week, but he's just so damn charismatic, and I can't get enough. <laughs> so I just need to ask really quick. Neil, your voice sounds super sexy right now. Mm-hmm. It is really raspy. Why is it raspy? What have you been doing? Well, you know, uh, for the last 60 years, I've been smoking cigarettes every single day. Yeah, so, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, the, uh, case the emphysema, I got you. <laughs> uh, but besides that, I think um, the fact that in my daytime job, I have to help train some dogs and doing a little screaming yesterday did not yeah. help. I can, I can imagine. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll try to keep We'll try to keep your conversation fortune to a minimum. Uh, we are sure pri- like <laughs> Yeah, just so I can hear myself talk more, because you know as well. Oh. So um, <laughs> we're privileged this week to have on our largest panel in the history of I Don't Give a Flick. Uh, I know that we capped out a couple of weeks ago with five of us. This week we've got seven, that's right, seven people on this episode uh we would like to welcome with us uh a slew of uh uh, actors from the uh texas community that have had success and not only in the state of texas but uh nationwide as well we'd like to welcome uh skeeta jenkins carlton uh coddle uh shannon toft uh, excuse me shauna toft and peggy scott guys welcome hello thanks for having yeah, thanks so much. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, so, kind of just uh, what we want. We want to just uh, for this week. The episode here is uh, is dare to dream. Basically, uh, uh, you know, it's never too late to chase what you've always wanted to do. To chase after that 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 silver lining, that light in the sky. And uh, we brought in uh, four very talented actors who, uh, for uh, for the most part, we've, we've all had the privilege of working with on one project or another. Um, so let's get a couple introductions in. Um, I'm just going to go based off how my my screen is set up right now. And uh, uh, um, Skeeta, you are the top. Oh, you're on my top left here. So let's start off with you. Uh, just a, a quick introduction about yourself. Um, and if you guys want to plug any any podcasts or projects you're currently working on or about to work on, feel free. Uh, the more the merrier. All right. Uh, Skeeter Jenkins, originally from Louisiana, uh, Plaquemine, Louisiana. I've been in Texas for about 20 years. So basically, I've been in Texas longer than I've been uh, in Louisiana. So I'm a Texan now. Uh, and Peggy, homegirl, she's from Louisiana too, so that's why we hit it off so well. I've worked with Neil before on one of his projects, Stolen Innocence. It was pretty awesome. We got snagged a little bit, but I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> right, um, we did. It's okay. <laughs> Damn shame. It's a travesty. <laughs> um, I got started about six years, yeah, six years ago. I... I was taken for um, someone thought I looked like the late and the great Michael Clark Duncan from the Green Mile without this right. stuff in my face and the, <laughs> and the voice. Um, I've worked with Peggy before on Vindication. Uh, that's probably one of my, besides Puppet Master, Vindication was one of my favorite projects to uh, work on. Um, what else? I'll let, the, I'll let the others go and then I'll fill in Perfect. as I go. Yeah. For, for sure, for sure. We'll definitely dive into it. Well, uh, uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Skeeta, and welcome. Uh, Carlton, how about you? Uh, yeah, about six years also. So amazing. And uh, my start was I was uh, asked to be a background artist extra in a movie, and the guy that got a role didn't show up, and uh, I fit the jacket. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm an actor. Um, All right. That's how I worked out. But since then, had great success <laughs> in TV, film, and uh, commercials. Um, I grew up also uh, in Austin, Texas, where I still reside now. And uh, after 21 years in the military and a couple of uh, deployments wow. during Iraqi freedom and uh, enduring freedom. Um, so had a good career right. there. And then this is my second go around in life. So I'm enjoying it. Uh, again, I'm, I feel like I'm just blessed every time I get booked. And 
and uh, I've been booked uh, just again since uh, that six year period uh, started. I've been booked constantly. And uh, right now I've got a movie coming out with uh, Regina King. I have a movie coming out with um, actually Sean is in the movie also with me with um, uh, uh, Martin Sheen's in it. Uh, Robert yeah. Paul. Uh, okay. My scene is with Luke Wilson. Um, what are the, or Luke, what is that right? Wilson? Yes. Wilson, yeah. Luke Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wilson, yeah. It's the same. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I've got I've got some good stuff uh, coming up, and we're shooting right now a movie here in Dallas called uh, What's Where We Are Now. On location, we're shooting uh, Texas Kill City, and we're in the middle of that. Okay. And then we'll be doing um, the next one coming up is called um, um, Casting the First Stone, and Shauna is also in, in that one with me as well. So we, we're we're uh, enjoying this ride and loving every minute of it. And I've also the privilege of working with you guys, obviously, in a film. And then uh, Peggy, of course, uh, many times. Um, and not yet, uh, Skeeter, but we'll get there. Oh, yeah. We'll get there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but I'm just, again, just enjoying the ride and loving it. And just like you guys said, it's living a dream. It's pursuing this. I am uh, 50 years old. And, <laughs> And, <laughs> I'm not. And she's not. <laughs> and so this is a late life start, and many guys did that. I'm not the only one to do that, or even after military career. Uh, I joined a long list of very distinguished actors in that category. And so, I've, I again, I'm just riding a wave, enjoying every minute of it. There's nothing about being on set that I don't love. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just, I just can't, can't tell you enough how much I feel every day. I'm privileged to live my dream. Perfect, man. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you for your service. And uh, thank you for joining us. Appreciate yeah. it. Glad to have you. Yeah. Uh, Sean, how about you? Well, I started out in theater actually when I was a little bitty kid and, um, actually transferred to, or transitioned to film and television two years ago. Um, started out with background work, like a lot of people do get their start that way. Uh, I've done some commercials and of course some films that Carlton has mentioned uh, that we, we co-star in Casting the First Stone together. Um, and we are supporting actors oh. in Texas Kill City. Uh, we're both in Felt My Orphans and we've got some other projects coming up. I am also an executive producer for two international films that are in pre-production right now. Oh, yeah. One is called We Welcome Guests, and the other one is called The Pentagon. So I'm really looking forward to seeing those come to fruition as well. Okay. Wonderful. I'm glad. Thank you so much for joining us. Glad to have you. How about you, Peggy? Absolutely. Uh, I, I started in pretty much middle school and high school. I, I started in uh, in musical theater. I did a lot of musical mm -hmm. theater. Back in, and as Skeeta said, I'm from Louisiana. I'm from just outside of New Orleans, growing up in, in the New Orleans area. <laughs> Um, but then after when I graduated high school, I I stopped doing acting and I, I took off about 28 years, uh, took mm. a break. Um, wow. And I had a graphic design company, raised three kids. Um, and then as the kids were growing up, I was thinking, you know, they're trying to decide what they want to be when they grow up. And I'm like, well, what do I want to be when I grow up? And uh, the thing okay. I always <laughs> really loved doing was acting. So so I got back into doing theater. And 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 in doing theater in in the Austin area, which is where where, mm -hmm. where we live, um, met somebody who was doing who was doing film and commercial work, and I said, well, let's try that. And, and I think that that being older and and all the all the other experiences I've had throughout mm -hmm. life has helped me so much um, with my acting. Um, yeah. Um, so and I I am sure. really loving it. The the things that I've of course, during COVID, there's not much going on at all. Uh, I, I'm working on an industrial right now that's really fun. Um, mm. And then, as Skeeta said, Vindication is is a faith-based crime drama series, and I'm one of the lead characters in that. And we're shooting season two right now. And Great. then um, I'm in several episodes of Fear the Walking Dead from last mm. season. And I, I can simply say that at the end of season five, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Perfect. Well, we hope they keep you in. Until, we hope they keep you in until the end. That's for sure. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, so I kind of just wanted to get. Yeah, I just wanted to. Since, speaking of COVID, uh, I just wanted to go around, and this is for the panel too. Anybody really? Uh, what are you guys doing right now to keep yourself occupied? We actually had an episode a couple weeks ago where we talked with. Uh, we had we had another producer on, another friend of mine from LA, and then a couple. Uh, 
a couple of uh, DPs here in Texas. And, you know, we were talking about how they're, uh, you have your COVID compliance officers and, you know, uh, their uh, set medics are now more prevalent on even indie sets at certain points. Um, so what's everybody, what are you guys doing? Even if it's not projects, what are y'all, what's everybody doing to stay sane? Like, you know, or like for us, we we're doing this podcast, you know, lead feather, uh, you know, no, lots of clients dropped out because they don't have the money right now to, to pay us to do commercials and stuff. So, so we're like, let's, let's do a podcast. That's, that's what we're entertaining ourselves with. So how about you guys? I've been doing, uh, been doing a lot of reading on the back porch, a lot of, uh, from playing football in college, uh, one of the things you do if you want to get better oh. practice. So I've sure. been doing a lot of monologues, a lot of reading plays. I've purchased a uh, master class and, and uh, checking out Samuel Jackson, how he does his thing. And uh, <laughs> I saw his the other day when I was, I was watching Aaron Storkins on the screenwriting and, uh, and I saw his on there and I was like, I, I don't act anymore really, but I, I just, I have to watch this. Should I? Yeah. Is it? For our listeners out there, is that something that's worth their time to take a look at his? It really is. It's just, it's just not just acting though. You have directors, producers, writers. It's kind of cool to just see how other people get in the flow of doing their things. And um, here recently, I've been doing a couple auditions for some projects in uh, a couple in Canada. So I hope I get that. Okay. I, all right. Yeah, um, they're doing a thing where if I get they're the role, they, they would quarantine me for 14 days and they pay for everything and pay for you to okay. film. So I was like, oh, I, oh yeah, I would, I'm interested. That's kind of why I'm going to go to because they want someone with facial <laughs> hair. So okay. we'll see. Now, are all of you, speak, speaking of that, are all of you guys currently for your auditions? All of them are are either telestreamed or they're they're uh, pre-recorded video. Is that correct? Is that have you noticed when when you're uh, like excuse me when when you're auditioning before pre-COVID? What was kind of the percentage of how many were live and what was the percentage of uh, how many that were actually uh, recorded or video uh, submission? I went in a bunch. I don't know about Peggy. I I found that that for commercial auditions they really wanted you to come in. Sure. Um, and most of the commercial auditions are cattle calls. You'll see there's so many people that they've been in through there. I can imagine. Um, but for the for the bigger projects, the more uh, and the, the ones that are out of town, definitely they they wanted video submissions. But what I found find interesting and and exciting and and if we can find positives about what's going on with with quarantine is that there are so many casting directors now who are mm. finding ways to give opportunities for more video type yeah. auditions sure. and, and even live things um, through, through, through like Actors Access. They've come up with a new, a new platform to do there that, is going, that I'm hoping is going to give actors from lots of other places more opportunities mm. rather than, than just people in L.A. or you, you don't have to be in the place where, where you know, you, you won't be having to show up with the casting director and travel sure. to go to auditions and there'll be more opportunities, I hope. Okay. So a lot so a lot of commercials, you know, a lot of commercials pre-COVID were were there and for features, shorts, TV series, a lot of them were were mail in audition for the most part. Yeah. Approximately. Okay. Okay. Um Carlton, what about you? What have what's what's kind of been coming across your desk recently? Well um during COVID, when it first started, you know, everything was just completely shut down. We didn't right. get anything. And so for weeks, we were doing um, online classes with Zoom. Um, <laughs> boy, if we'd have known that, we'd have invested in yeah. Zoom a long time ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> even saying that name out loud, I realized how much I've said that word <laughs> the last two weeks. But so <laughs> classes uh, became the norm, other things like that. I think um, about three weeks ago, um, all back on our radar became these constant uh, actors access is back up and cast directors from LA are back in and they're now asking for more and more and now we're getting constantly um, able to audition again um, and then fortunately we've actually uh, Sean and I both have the success story of telling you that we've, we've landed a couple of those roles that we probably wouldn't have gotten because they're so far away and Sean has said she's working oh, on international oh. projects I just got booked on a film in Australia but my part will be actually filmed in Texas. Uh, but it's an Australian horror flick. 
well-known Australian director, but my part, he needed a Texan with a Texan voice, you know. And so I got I got asked in that. And I wouldn't have got that otherwise, like like you said, had it not been an international reach for this new way of doing things. Although yeah. we had video auditions before, not quite like we're doing them now. And um, for me, I'll just say a personal side of this is that I don't like video auditions because um, one of my superpowers in all this is is I um, I like people and I like to own the room. I like to meet people and talk to them and and kind of have that playoff. If I if I see a, a, they're having a bad day, I can cheer them up. If I see them when I walk in the audition room, if I see that there's something I can add to it, I can see their reaction. I don't get that. So now this is a one and done. Whatever I put on that tape, that's what they're going to see of me. And I don't get to see their feedback right away. And I feed off of that. I'm, I'm one of those people guys that like that like people. Um, so for me, that's one of those things where I, I, I have a drawback. But I got to tell you, I do like the fact that I'm now reaching to Australia. So, you know, hey, come on. I can't I cannot complain about that. So that's, that's, that's right. my thing. For a few months, nothing. And then in the last, I'd say, three weeks now, we're getting auditions at least. And, uh, and then we were on set last weekend for the first time. Mm -hmm. We did one, we did a commercial, a small commercial, but we did, we last week brought a film set, both of us, and we had the whole mask up thing and the whole pre COVID testing and all the, the, the contract about what you will and will not do on set. So it has affected even the work sure. right now. Like we've not seen that before. So there's mm -hmm. some new effects. I'm sure the guys can tell you the, their experience, but our experience was, you know, quarantined and then kept off to the side, all that. So again, things are changing. And they probably won't go back for quite a while. I even got, I even got certified to be a COVID tracer. So if I ever go on set and someone needs it, I can trace for them. So there you go. What all, too uh, much time on my hands. What all is involved in being a COVID tracer? I had to go through like seven hours of online classes and take tests. I thought I was in school again. I was like, Really, what am I doing? Okay. But hopefully it come in handy. Okay. So it's kind of just like, I guess, ends up looking like a family tree, but with COVID, and you're tracing who they met, who they got with, and what time. Okay. Basically. Okay. That is incredibly time-consuming. Yeah. I, I can, Actually, I'll say, speaking of family tree, that is something I've definitely been doing during quarantine. Years ago, I had done a lot of family history research, and I haven't done it since, since I got back into acting. I, I really haven't done it, and uh, and I've started to get back into it. And now I remember why I stopped doing it because it just <laughs> so much time. <laughs> Well, I, I, I do some uh, family history work as well. And uh, with the online resources, this is way off topic, but whatever. Um, with the online resources, uh, you know, like Ancestry.com or Family Tree, it, it really makes it easy because there are people that are very good at doing that. And you don't have to be good at all. You're just like, here's my grandpa's name. And it's like, boom, you're related to Charlemagne. Cool. <laughs> Do you not find it funny? Because I had one of those. I, I had one of those come back a couple months ago, and I I just I got percentages of other parts of like Europe that I just I would not have known like at all. Like I would have no percentage. I would have no idea that I was you know five percent you know Slovakian or or whatever you know something along those lines. Um, did it, Peggy? Have you come across any? Any portion that just, it surprised you, kind of baffled you a little bit? You're like, why didn't Well, I had done a lot of research years ago. I mean, there's several portions of the family that I have going back to the 1700s. Wow. Um, but but I was always very good at collecting the information, but not organizing it. So okay. I mean, right now I'm trying to force myself to organize it and, and, and put it in, you know, in a format where I can share sure. with, with all my cousins and and yeah. I've done that a few times, and they're, they're all like so excited to hear the stories. They're, re they're really interesting. Yeah, that, it, 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 definitely keep, yeah, it definitely keeps the juices flowing and, you know, keeps you sane. And in fact, there's some stories that I'd love to have made into films someday. <laughs> oh, well, maybe we'll have another episode about pitches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and see what, see what comes to that. Um, yeah. So a question, a question for our guest. Um, due to the overwhelming amount of video interviews recently, Zoom interviews and so forth. Do you think that the the prerogative of producers and casting directors moving forward when casting is going to be solely based online due to how efficient it is for them, 
uh, how much cheap, I, I don't know if it's just cheaper. They don't have to, you know, the, the overhead costs for renting out space, uh, stuff like that. Do you guys think it's going to at some point 100% completely swing in that direction of being online? Or are no. we still going to go back to the normal? Yeah, I think most of it's going to be, and y'all can chime in, the initial audition. And if they call you back, they probably going to want you in person again. Sure. And, and I prefer it that way. I mean, there's nothing like being in the room, meeting people. But, oh, but to have to travel for an initial audition, you, yeah, I think that hopefully that it'll, this will eliminate that. But, mm -hmm. but they really, they really, you know, depending on the role and how big of a role it sure. is, they really get to know you, not just what you can do as an actor, but they want to know you as a person. If they're going to be working with you for a long period of time, they, yeah. they want to get to know you. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so for callbacks at this point, you know, round two and sometimes three, you know, maybe even four, depending on who the um, who the uh, director is. Uh, what is it? It's the same thing right now. Right? Actually, better question to put in put to you guys. Have you guys had to go in for an actual live audition yet in the last five months? No, no not for mine. No? Okay, I'm I'm glad to hear that. I just I, I didn't know if anybody was trying to you know skim by on the by on the skin of their teeth. So. Good well, to hear actually, that the, industrial, the industrial that I booked, I didn't even have to audition. My agent just said that that he submitted me. They watched my reel. They booked me, and hopefully, uh, so. this yeah. is going to be like at least four different four different episodes of this industrial that I get to do. And so, so you so, you, yeah. so, so you, you didn't even have I get to work. Uh, you, you didn't have one uh, audition specifically for that. Like they no. just watched your reel and they're like, "I want that girl." Yeah. Okay, yes. that's pretty cool. That's the best. Me, Peggy. I need Peggy now. Relationship uh, equity came into play with us uh, with Texas Hill City. There was no audition for that either. That's yeah. Cool. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I I think thinking about it, and for everything that I've ever worked with any of you all in, I I don't actually think we've had you audition for anything. I think it's all just been yeah. I think I think it's right. Am I right, guys? I mean, is I think it was all just reels and. Yeah, uh, or, or just like a headshot pool. Skeet was a headshot pool. That's right. Yep. Yeah, we're just like, who can play a detective? And we looked at it, we looked at the resume, and we looked at it, and we're just like, Skeet, this guy is a, a role board for this. <laughs> but for in Skeet was our first choice and first cast member. That's true. True. Yeah. And I, I have to say, you just you really nailed that part just perfectly, Skeeta. I mean, uh, just I, I, was, I, was, I was very happy with how uh, your detective turned out. If they don't write a spinoff of Law and Order with you as the star, I'm just going to stop watching TV. <laughs> completely. There's just there's just no point in tuning into live national TV anymore, <laughs> unless you're the lead. Johnny, I wanted to ask you, what was the yeah. first thing that we did together? The first thing that we did together was was our favorite our favorite bad film of all time. Uh, uh, um, what the, the widow, widow widow it was widow, widow. It was yes. widow. yeah 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 heroes first the second short I think that was like I, my I like that character I was so oh you killed it <laughs> you you and Al you and Alice yeah, Gregory I really got killed it. Her. <laughs> yeah y'all yeah you did I had a I I remember it was a, it was a, the second short it was like the second year I had it was actually doing films probably what seven eight years ago something like that um and yeah and and yeah you you and Allison were in there and and I remember Stephen Robinson was directed and he had you guys in there for probably seven or eight hours and I come in at the beginning and as we all know you know call times really don't you know unless you're on a really professional set call times need shit and I was sitting there for the entire night and then I got on film for I don't know. 10 seconds maybe <laughs> and i went home and i was just gagged and screaming and so it was great anyways and, and uh, the people in the apartment next door were having a party the whole time <laughs> they were we had, we had to go over and ask them to be quiet david i remember david estrada was producing that one he asked he offered the uh, host like 50 bucks to shut the hell up and he was like would you mind being quiet sir and just we're trying to film everything's getting picked up here so let, um let, let me let me pose a question okay. to our guests um now that you guys are kind of uh moving forward with your careers here i'm curious uh do you guys are you thinking about becoming um you know sag after certified or are you going to kind of stay independent for now because yeah. you do get already huh i was asking him more if some of them are all, i didn't right, know if anybody yeah. was already uh, be because it does uh from a producer's point of view, um, it is a lot harder in terms of the amount of paperwork and oh, rules yes. and policies and <laughs> procedures to follow to have yeah. a SAG actor uh, or actress uh, on your show. 
Um, yeah. But so I was just curious because it is sort of like a big deal, you know, like it's, I guess, where you decide, you know, is this going to be professional or where are we going to be at with this? I, I'm eligible. I just haven't joined yet. Okay. Go ahead, Peggy. Uh, yeah, I, I became SAG eligible a, a while ago. Um, but Texas is a right to work state. Mm -hmm. Right. If right. You, even, if, even if you work on many, many SAG projects, you cannot be forced to join as long as you're in a right to work state. I am to the point where if I work in a union state on a on a union project, I will be forced to join the union. In Mexico. Um, right. And the problem with that is that in Texas, there are so many independent projects and, and I enjoy working on independent projects. And if you are SAG, you're not supposed to do them. Um, there is a little loophole that you can go go that you can do. Um, and of course, the union hates people to do it, um, but it's going by core where you're a, a, a dues paying non-member, which means that, that you're still part of the union, but they can't force you to to only work on union projects. Um, so, yeah, I mean, one when I'm forced to join, that's probably what I'm going to do in order to keep my options open to be able to have more work in Texas. Sure. <laughs> we were well below that. <laughs> 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 Please, uh, Carlton and uh, Shauna, what about you guys? Well, I am working on my SAG eligibility so that that opens up more options right for me. Um, I have to think about the option of side or uh, whatever that does sure. come into play as well. So um, definitely want the the bigger projects to become available to me. So definitely mm -hmm. going after that SAG card for sure. So for me, I got I got SAG eligibility right out of the gate. So I was I was very lucky uh, to get that. And what that tells us um, in this part of the world, it says, hey, he's done something in something where he had a lot, and it wasn't just a small project. So that's what that really says to other people here. Now, when I'm in California and audition, they see SAG eligibility as something completely different because they think. If they hire me, I might be a must join. And what that means is that on, on the day that I get booked, I have to be a full fledged current mm -hmm. member of SAG AFTRA. So it's a it's a it's a kind of a touchy subject in this part of the country as well. And I say Texas, especially in, in Louisiana, because we're a non union state, like like Peggy said, right to work state. And so what that means for us here is that if we join, there's a lot of projects that will not even look at us at all, consider us at all because of what you just said, the, mm -hmm. the hassle paperwork or requirement of more money. Um, but I've done several SAG things, obviously working with people like Martin Sheen and all those I mentioned earlier. And, and um, you know, they're all SAG members, have been for years. And uh, in many cases, they are they are even SAG award recipients that I work with. And I can tell you that every time I talk to them, I say, should I, should I not? And say, until you're out of Texas, don't do it. Don't do it. Now, again, that's controversial words. There'll be people listening to this, broad, this broadcast and they'll say, Oh, that guy didn't know what he's talking about. The moment you get SAG eligible, <laughs> join. It's the professional group, a yadi dotty. But I'm telling you, the reason it's so touchy is around here, many, many projects that we do, and we're paid for, and we're paid well, and many times it's paid scale. I did a, I did sure. a Ram commercial in Texas and paid scale on, on SAG. Um, so it doesn't affect our pay. It doesn't affect us getting booked here. But if I'd done that in a, in a state like California, or uh, in, uh, New York, then it would have been yeah. different. And so I'm in the same place where, where Peggy said, obviously he's had a, a, an ongoing role in a episodic uh, uh, where if, it, if she goes anywhere else, she's in that category. They're like, hey, we've got to get you to join here much more. So that's what I said. I, I think that for us down here, it's not a, a, so much of a, a requirement and it doesn't mean you're less professional. So when we say here sure. SAG eligible, what we're trying to say and why Shauna just said, She's working to get there. It just means, hey, we've done something significant in our career. That means someone has already 
given us the chance to prove ourselves. Mm -hmm, so right. now use us again or, or look at us more seriously. But um, in other places, again, that means immediately, hey, watch out. We may have to get this guy in before he can do anything. Um, if, if that makes any sense to the listeners, and I'm, I'm sure to you guys, because you said you did paperwork, you know when That's you're doing uh, when you're a full SAG member and you do something like <laughs> like what you were guys did. I was on that with you guys, and like just that one or two lines, you have to do all of your work to satisfy the union. Um, so again, as long as I'm, I'm stationed out of Texas and working here and Louisiana and Atlanta, um, then that's not going to be on my on my uh, to do list anytime soon. It's like there's no beginning or end. Right. That was oh, your that yeah. was your line from my the beginning. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. The very, very good. Very topical, Gary. Yes, thank uh, you. I know. I know why we keep you around now. For all three people who have seen I the Beholder. Yes. Go to <laughs> www.leadfeatherproductions.com. All right, and we're done plugging that one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so let's, uh, so I, I kind of want to break into, cause this, this episode is, uh, is, is definitely, is definitely about acting during COVID and it's about, you know, um, we, we, we got, we brought you guys on as well to some level, a decent level of success, you know, uh, in your careers up until this point, And hopefully, you know, we continue to see your stars continue to rise. Um, but the big thing is that a lot of people out there and we've encountered a lot of other people outside of you guys even uh and even people that aren't acting uh people that are just pas um they talk about wanting to get a start later in life and they're like oh i'm just you know i'm i'm this i'm so and so age or i've got this going on right now or my kids this or my job that it pays too well i don't want to from where you guys started, like, I mean, Peggy, you said you had started acting back in middle school, and high school. Um, I'm sure all of you at some point in grade school were doing some form of theater or yeah. movies with friends on sure. whatever type of camera was available. Um, so just really quick, I, I want to go down the line. I do want to I do want to ask how old you guys were, kind of what uh, age that, what, that you started acting. Um, and, and Peggy, what do you remember kind of what uh, grade specifically? Like, was it I was four or five, like started doing um, music theater and stuff like that or? Um, I mean, just school plays, Ma mainly it was like seventh grade, seventh, eighth grade. Um, okay, yes. Yeah. Oliver. Oliver, I was Nancy, and then eighth grade, uh -huh. we did My Fair Lady, and I was Eliza Duke. Sure. Little. And then right. um, in high school, I, I went to an all-girls school, but I did plays at the all-boys school. <laughs> um, <laughs> just did a lot of a lot of theater down there. Perfect, yeah. And uh, Sean, I didn't want to pursue it. Um, I did. Yeah theater all through uh well elementary through high school sure um, yeah i think a lot so of us lot, started lots there. and lots of theater <laughs> yeah I, I can imagine yeah lots of us lots of us doing doing tech music theater shakespeare whatever whatever was going around um Car carlton what about you did, did you do a lot of it in grade school as well or did you i sure did yeah i i mm -hmm. got my first on um, first television show was actually i sang on the jerry, jerry lewis telephone um, oh, yeah. so, oh cool okay uh, it wow. was, they, broke, they broke out back into the local channels. And, okay. The uh, PBS kind of thing. Night is a 24 hour telephone on TV for the young people that don't know. Uh, Jerry Lewis had 24 hour <laughs> telephone every, every year. And um, during that time, they broke to the local channels to give money, pour money into a local um, uh, kind of a fistful, fish tank of, of coins. And uh, we went to a place called Hickory Farms and got our little uh, can and went around and collected money and then dropped it in. <laughs> so I got asked to. Um, to do a ditty on on that show and then i think the next time i actually came up was in elementary school i was in the drama club we did plays and stuff and sure. uh third grade i did a musical that was reviewed so I had my first and i still have the clippings from the paper my mom kept all that and i got reviewed in third grade so i was going through high school and i did it both at school and at my church my church did about three musicals a year and I always had either the second or or lead somewhere in there um, so we toured yeah. with those. We went across the country. I sang at the 1980s World Fair. It was in uh, uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. So yeah. I've, I've got a lot I of was experience. There. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> and I did Professor Higgins as well in my in my uh, high school uh, in days as well for uh, My Fair Lady. So yeah, we have a lot of that in common. I think you find people that that grew up and maybe in some way it was recreational. In some way it was our outlet for so many things. You know the sure. the the way of, of, of coping and, and coming of age. But I think so many of us at the time we turned 18, uh, my route, of course, is college and then a career. And that's just 
you know, you, you go to work every day. This was not something you, uh, you did for, for the rest of us. I mean, people moved to LA and New York and they were called, they were called waiters. Uh, now they're called Uber <laughs> drivers, I guess. But <laughs> the whole idea is that you move there to make a success of it, but it's a long shot. You yeah. might have to run off of the circus if you're going to be a, you know, performer. And so that's where I got stuck until I was in my right. late 40s and just got thrown in my lap and it was just such a charge again. And I do about one play a year. Last year I did mm -hmm. uh, The Importance of Being Earnest, Oscar Wilde's famous uh, play. Yep. I played that <laughs> last year. And I had a small part. I wasn't a large, I played Lane uh, in it. And um, it's a small part, but I'm back in theater, back in what they saw, the, the, the smells and being behind the set and all that oh, yeah. charge of live audience. But I still love that. And I still love doing what I do. And it's just me in the room with a camera and a couple of uh, you guys and some knob turners and all that stuff. It's fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just, it just gets in your blood and you just, you just are so happy to be there. And I'm just so glad I can make a living at it. I'm so glad I do yeah. this and, and just been so fortunate um, to be able to say, yes, I can go and, and make enough to where it, it sustains me um, at this point. And six years yeah. in, that's not everyone's story. And I know that. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, I just always give back to like you guys that took a chance on me and said, hey, here's a, you know, a couple of lines. Well, you know, it's all a beginning. It just starts snowballing from a couple of lines to being now, like you said, in a starring role of a film um, in six years. That's, right. that's just my story. It's, in, it's said, infectious, man. It's 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 always in our blood, regardless. I mean, Neil, Neil, Gary and I had we were all friends from high school and we had all started in theater as well. And, you know, none of us. You know, I mean, we, we write, direct, and produce our own stuff now, but we all of us started out as actors, you know, and it just, it kind of evolved from there for some people. And who knows, maybe at some point we'll jump back in just because we're tired of staying behind the camera, but who knows? Um, Skeeter, what about you? You said, did you say something about playing college football too, or did I miss I your did. I played uh, okay. in New Mexico and two uh, years here in Texas. Um, oh. My first, I did a lot of uh, talent shows in. Uh -huh junior high and high school, but I never acted until I did uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. I played Tom Robinson in Louisiana nice. in an yep. old school courthouse. It was kind of cool. They had the, the black shit in the balcony and the, so, so they, they almost made it like the movie where the whites were sitting at the bottom. So it was, that was my first taste of acting. That's very interesting. And then, um, I worked for a, uh, when I graduated from college, I worked for a foster care adoption agency. So I still work. My job is just, uh, talk about a blessing. I am so, uh, thankful to my boss. They, uh, as long as I'm doing my work, they allow me to go and do my acting. And he says, uh, every time I call him now, he, he's like, Oh, I, was, I thought you was calling to say you quit and going to Hollywood. I said, nah, I can do everything. <laughs> I can do everything from here. And I got, and then I really got the bug when uh, there was a film called Ruth. Michael Clark Duncan had just died. And the director of that film basically thought he and I resembled each other and kind of sounded alike. And so I played a cameo of him and people were like, what? They were oh. looking twice. No, I'm not him. <laughs> so it was kind of, <laughs> nice. It was kind of, nice. I'm not that big though. He's a he was a big old man. He was a large. He was a large big man, man, but he was a big man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was, but everybody say he was a gentle giant. So yeah, yeah, just just like he played in the Green Mile, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I, I'm re I'm really interested to know what was. And I, I kind of heard bits and pieces from everybody in their introductions, but just a really quick rundown. What was everybody's first profession before they started acting? Or like, what was like, what, what was the, the main job you had for the first, like, you know, like in your 20s and 30s and stuff like that? Act like, one. The, what was yeah, your act one? one? There you go. Act one. Chapter one. What, what, uh, what professions did you guys have? I'll go. Uh, international tax accounting. Wow. Okay. Wow. All right. <laughs> That'll pay the bills, literally. Yeah. yeah sure. Literally. <laughs> Love uh, it. How about you my, my degree is in graphic design. And even right. while I was in school, I started my own graphic design company. 
And, mm-hmm. and that's what I did for years until um, my husband got transferred. And, mm-hmm. and we, had our, we had a one-year-old at the time. So we moved and I sold the company and, and got out of that. But we did oh, wow. many other things, many other things over the years. Sure. Um, yeah. But, you know, graphic design struck first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about you, Carlton? Well, in high school, I was uh, going to be a preacher. And so okay. I, I see everything. you being good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I heard everything in that direction. And so, uh, but I didn't go there. I went into the military. Okay. And, but then later on, um, as, uh, as they say, as an adult, I went back uh, to grad school. I went to Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary and, mm-hmm. uh, and started pursuing that again. Um, and again, had a brush with that for a while in my life. I was always in the military, but sometimes I would serve in a church wherever I was. Sure. And um, that was my ultimate, you know, goal. But military was my obviously career for for many many years. And um, and then uh, once I got out of that, I actually went to uh, teaching school. I taught at Comel ISD. Wow. And so I thought that was even my second career. And that's why I started thinking that's that's where my life is going to go. But yeah. this came up as like I said, an extra. It got bumped to a principal role. Um, in a film that um, directed by uh, Dana Glover, Danny Glover's uh, cousin, and okay. um, it went to uh, the Cannes Film Festival. It premiered at the Cannes Film Festival, so uh, it's not a bad start uh, to have. Really? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> yeah, it's a four-year-old in a, in a film that goes to the con with some pretty good uh, names around me. That's where I yeah. started. So yeah. I don't have that typical of uh, years and struggle, and you know. Um, living out of my car and all that great stuff. Uh, it doesn't you know. sound like any of you did, so that's that's really good to hear. Like it makes well, me happy to hear that that's not the only way. You like you you have to go and bust your ass waiting tables and bartending and mm-hmm. Uber driving and babysitting and just doing all these jobs you don't want to make a career out of just to pay your bills. You know, it's good to hear that you know that if this is an option. You know, you can go do one thing and then and then start another. Uh, Skeeta, uh, what what were you doing? Or it was the same thing you're you're doing now yeah, with the same, with the same thing I'm doing now. Uh, social work and I travel uh I used to travel a lot a lot speaking. I wrote a couple of children's books so I travel oh. uh, travel Very speaking cool. in churches. So um I have about three hours I have a master's already but sure. being crazy wanting to go in the direction of the church. I mm-hmm. I'm about three hours short of uh another master's in uh Christian ministry but I'm not going to pursue it. Uh, I still go and speak in churches right now. But so that's a passion of mine, just traveling and encouraging people. So if you're ever on Facebook on a Monday, I always post like a Monday motivation and it has something spiritual. Just I love encouraging people. Mm, I had a question for for you all. Um, uh, Peggy had brought up earlier that... um, getting into acting uh, later on in life gives you some different perspective. And uh, when I first went to college, I went to ACC, uh, which is Austin Community College. And it was interesting because you didn't just have 18 year olds, you know, to 21 year olds, you had people that had you know, were, you know, somewhere in their 60s or 70s. Um, And so you had people that had all these different perspectives and backgrounds in life and had done more or less, you know, in in their lives, you know. And so I think for me, that made ACC a very interesting college to go to because it was a lot, um, a lot more diversity of opinion. So Mm -hmm. I I wanted to kind of ask you guys, how do you feel that uh, sort of really getting your acting career started, you know, not when you're 18 or like right out of college, but having done some things prior to that in life, uh, like, how do you feel that that specifically kind of helped or hindered you? I think, uh, when, when you're older, you've failed several times before you've been told no before, uh, you kind of know, have a, a great sense of who you are as a person and, even though I love acting and I would uh, drop my job, I hope my boss is not listening in a second. <laughs> to go and, uh, your boss is listening as well as millions <laughs> of others. <laughs> Even though I, would, I would drop my job in a second to go do it uh, full time because I I just get a joy when uh, kind of what Carlton was saying, you know, it's I can't think of nothing else when I'm 
on a movie set or doing something movie wise, even here at home, taping myself doing monologues and stuff. I just get so into it. So I lost my train of thought, but it'll come back. To me. <laughs> okay. All right. No problem. <laughs> Uh, now, uh, when I think about I've been, being in classes, if it take, if, and I've taken a lot of classes, and that's something that I would absolutely want to say, and I highly recommend mm-hmm. if anybody's interested in pursuing acting, the number one first thing you need to do is to get into a good class with a good teacher mm-hmm. who can teach you the you know the basics of acting, the basics of auditioning, um, you know how how this whole business works, and then also I definitely recommend working as a background extra. Getting yourself on set, seeing what a film set is like, seeing what a TV set is like. You learn so much. Um, starting out later, what I did a lot of uh, was working with film students. And mm-hmm. and it was interesting, you know, being an older person with, with all my life experiences and business experiences and things and working with these young people who, you know, they knew more about film than I did. But I knew more about so many other things than yeah. they did. And I and we we learn from each other, and and I love that relationship of you know learning from young people and and also being able to to help them in what they were doing and, and encourage them. Um, but being in class and seeing some of the some of the my instructors working with the young people, trying to help them get to a certain emotion or feeling because they're young and they haven't experienced that. And I'm thinking, oh, I can just pull that out because I've been through that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Some of them I wouldn't recommend, but, you know, but. Sure. Yeah. I, I think there's two things for me. I think I think priorities and experience. So those are my two things sure. that I bring into the table. So when I'm doing a movie, um, I notice that a lot of times uh, on set is an advisor um of some kind whether it's a police officer he's there to advise how to do something or a military person who is advising i uh have done shows where they're they're even full-time uh on television shows where they have a full-time person so it's funny when you go there and you do that and you realize that's what i used to do that's my job i know what i'm doing i know how to carry for example an m16 rifle i know how to uh put the uniform together so there's experiences I have like that that really help a great deal. And in this industry, they actually pay somebody to help that. The other one I like is that I have a world of, of just experiences of, of just of other jobs that I've done. Mm. And I bring all that to my role. Mm. And everything, even being a father, uh, I, I know what that feeling is supposed to feel like. I know how that interaction is supposed to have between this to me and that other person, the other actor. Mm. So I the experience. The other thing is my priorities. Um, if I'd have had this at 18 years of age, I'm telling you, I'd have, I'd have the, the sports car and the speeding tickets and um, girls around. Um, but, uh, cover both. You only got one. <laughs> yeah, I got one. Well, <laughs> it's only have one good ear. Um, no, seriously, I, I, would, uh, I would have had a different priorities to sure. what I'm doing this for. And now I do it for other people. I do it to help. And I do it to give back, and I do it to do so much more than just myself. I have a um, a, a, a group on uh, Facebook that's a support group for actors. They help each other get booked. They help each other do auditions. Um, and I love being a part of that community, and and even being in that sense a, a leadership in that way to support and to give back. Um, and so much of what we do um, can be can be egotistical. It can be self serving. It can be all those things, but not at this age, not at 50 years of age. Um, I am not into that. <laughs> I didn't quite catch that. Myself, you say? But, what? Okay. So, again, uh, yes, those are Me my too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your, your audio has gone in and out. I know, uh, listeners, I say my age, but, uh, don't adjust this that. It's got to be technical. got to be technical difficulties. The, the fact that you but, said but don't adjust your set. My experience helped me with the roles, uh, unbelievably. And then again, my priorities have, have definitely changed. And so I'm, I'm glad where I am, it fits perfectly where I need to be mm-hmm. uh, my, in my acting life. No, so I'll take you back on uh, what Carlton said and also what Peggy said. Um, you know, if, if I jumped into this from theater into film when I was 18 years old, I mean, I was going into, I was doing modeling and stuff there and I was going to be up in New York and, you know, things mm. didn't work out with that for whatever reason, but I still had a whole lot of growing up to do. Mm. And I had also um, met my now ex-husband 
when I was uh, 19 and, mm. you know, got married, had children, had a really crazy life during that time. And, you know, there, there are just, there are so many experiences that I can now draw on mm. uh, from going through all of the, the parenting stuff, uh, like Carlton mentioned, but also uh, we, we had a whole lot of struggles and things. So, I mean, I have all of that, that hurt to, to draw from, but I also have joy and, you know, just the whole maturing process to draw from uh, in different roles now. So it's, it's really, I think, more beneficial for me to have gone through much more of that. I mean, I still have a whole lot more growing up to do, but um, for me, acting is, it's therapy. Mm. It is, it's, it's a passion. It is something that I think you never are too old to start. I mean, Kathy Bates, look at her. And she is phenomenal. I just, I love her to death. So it, it doesn't matter if, if you start like as a, as a kid on a show, like, you know, five years old or whatever, or if you're starting as a seasoned adult in your 60s or whatever, you know, yeah. it's, it's still going to be a part of you. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's that passion that comes out in you and it doesn't matter what age you are when you start. Absolutely. So piggybacking off of, off of this particular topic too, um, you know, it, it seems like, yeah, you know, it seems like a lot of you guys, you were able to get your start in either a background role or student films or somebody you knew in the industry pulled you in and you weren't even thinking about it. Um, is it feasible to be able to start this late in life with an already established career and continue to either have the career and act at the same time, like multitask and do it. I, I know you guys do, but um, there are some of you do. Do you feel that it, that it's feasible for most people to go ahead and do that or just straight up quit their job one day and, and do nothing but acting? I would never advise just going ahead and quitting <laughs> your job. Okay. Got to follow the dream though. Got to follow the dream, you know? <laughs> follow the dream, but you also don't, don't keep it in the secret that you are an actor. You know, yeah. you know, the jobs that I have worked, when I've gone into interview, I've said, hey, look, I am an actor. There are times that I'm going to need to be gone for auditions. There are times I'm going to need to be gone for bookings. Are you cool sure. with that? And and almost every single one of them has been like, well, yeah, sure. You know, I, I want to say I know a famous person. Yeah, go for it. So like my current job right now, all I have to do is say, you know, hey, I'm, I'm going to be gone as long as I give him enough notice, you know, like the day before or whatever, because he understands with production, you don't know your call time. But I mean, as long as I keep him in the loop, he's totally cool with it. I, I figured back on that. Never quit your job because something like this can happen. And where are you going to get your money from if everything is shut down? So uh, I, that's why I'm so thankful to the people that I work with right now and who are just open and flexible. And long as I stay on top and get my work done, those guys have been uh, awesome to me. And every now and again, uh, I make it a point to to tell supervisor boss that a hey, how much I appreciate it. Because when I tell people on set, you do what? They let you do what? Wait a minute, you've been gone for three weeks and you still got your job? So it's just been amazing, man. It's just been amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree. Don't don't quit the job because this this profession is so unpredictable. You cannot count on a steady income whatsoever. Um, when I started, I was um, thankfully working from home, office manager for uh, for an electrical engineering consulting firm, which just happened to be my husband's company. So that worked out really well. Um, and he gave me time off whenever I wanted it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, well, I so just really warm up to the boss. Got it. <laughs> yeah. uh, sleep with the boss always works. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I just myself, I rob a bank once a year. And so. Perfect. Uh, nice. Yeah. Hopefully you were. I'm just master, saying. So, yeah. I'm just we saying. If Marvel comes to me and offers me $6 million, I will quit my day job tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. I bet you will. I, I would. Well, you, you don't want to keep yelling at dogs all day? <laughs> 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 Stop federal order. Um, so, uh, so how many out, out of out of the four of our guests? Uh, how many of you guys do not have a uh, a full time day job? Are you? How many of you guys are actually are 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 any of you guys just doing acting full time and odd jobs to kind of pay the bill or pay the rent? Um, 
or, or do all of you guys have like a daytime gig that you have? Um, I work nights on purpose so that I sure, can do sure. that during the day because that's absolutely what only happens. Okay, perfect. That's a good idea. And you do too, Skeena. Okay. Carlton, what about you? Do you have it? I, no, I don't. No. Okay. Okay. It's just job to job. I like I like that. Peggy, what about you at this point? No, no, I don't. I don't. I'm in fact now I gave perfect. my daughter my job. She works for my husband. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's. <laughs> And that's the one who is helping helping me set up the computer and getting the microphone to work. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want a career in IT tech or anything like that? No, <laughs> no, never did. Never did. Oh, that. <laughs> I would never want that either. I'm horrible with computers. Um, so at, at any point when you guys, so it, it does sound like all of you are in unanimous agreement that you don't have to, you can be at any age at any point in your life uh, with anything going on, and you, if you have, if there's a will, there's a way, and if you yeah. want to make it work, you can make it work, you know, um, even, you know, you, you don't have to become a waiter or a bartender, you can still have a day job, and we just got to be flexible about it, so, you know, I heard some, some really good advice, yeah, you know, find, find a job that has, that has those flexible hours, um, be, be transparent, let people know ahead of time, hey, I do this, and this is something that I really love, is this okay if, you know, I do X, Y, and Z. Um, so that's great. Or build up a, you know, a fortune, I guess, ahead of time and then never have to work again and then you know, just go to as many yeah. auditions as you want. Um, that would be cool too, if that were. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, so at any point when you guys were, when you guys were, were younger, when you were kids, um, or even, even as teenagers, when you were here and stuff, um, did it ever occur to you to say, hey, I don't want to go and I don't want to go and join the military or be a minister or work with kids or graphic design or, or, you know, or accounting or taxes or anything like that. I want to go to LA and New York and I'm going to act and I'm going to do it. I don't care what it takes. Did that ever cross your mind or it was just a fleeting thought? I wanted to play football. So it didn't cross my mind at all. Okay. <laughs> well, right on. <laughs> for, for me, it did, but I was shut down because my, my parents um, had control of the money. <laughs> I wasn't talks. allowed to go to New York, but I also have Bank of Daddy, so um, <laughs> <laughs> that always helps. <laughs> yeah. you know, I have to keep I have to keep Dad happy. There you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, you know, for for most of you guys, I guess the the big thing that um that we're that we're looking for, I think, uh, for for a lot of folks here is do you guys have any it doesn't even necessarily have to be for people that are wanting to go ahead and get into the game um you know uh, that, that they want to get into the game and it's that's a late start for them just any actor in general what tricks of the trade would you give to people I, we heard some really good stuff you know working with working with film students um you know working working in like the film students you know trying to find like go to if you're in austin go to ut if you're in los angeles go find uh shorts at ucla or usc or something like that and act for free at the beginning um get into a class are there any tricks of the trade i mean like uh, facebook groups backstage.com stuff like that what would you guys suggest for aspiring actors to get started yeah. networking okay yeah. how so what, what are what are the what are the best the best events to go network I've been to a couple of mixers, and I, the first time I went, I was like, ah, this thing's going to be. But I'm kind of like Carlton. I'm a people's person, so anywhere I go, I can mingle and chat with people. And it turned out to be beneficial because I have an audition for a couple projects. People just say, hey, uh, so-and-so told me about you from this. We want you in this. So that's been pretty cool, just networking with people. Yeah, I, I agree with networking is, is everything. I think Sean said earlier, uh, relationship, relationship equity in this business is so important. Mm, um, yeah. it's, oh. it's, it's not just who you know, it's who knows you. So when they're casting, they remember you, they see, they see you out there. Um, you know, it's like anything else. You've got to, you've got to market your, your product and your product in this case is you. So you market yourself. You market what your skill sets are. You market what you, um, what you're available for, uh, like for, for uh, in our case, I know we travel a lot. We just everybody. We'll travel. We'll go anywhere to shoot yeah. anything. So um, you get your you get your word out and you do those things. But but yeah, it's it's about it's about that. I, I think I think the classes are important. You do a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of networking class. Um, right. uh, there's a the class. Sean is in a class mm -hmm. right now. They just had a casting director as their uh, speaker last week, who has who did the last Star Wars. She did Star Trek. Um, big casting director in class with her. 
Um, April Webster. April Webster. There you go. So we'll name. There you go. There you go. There yeah, name drop that one. Take that. Well, Glenn yeah. Morshower is my acting coach. Another drop. There we go. Name <laughs> drop. <laughs> so, <laughs> He's pretty awesome. All right. So, so before we mic drop, I'll say that that that's what I'm saying. All that is is uh is part of the networking, the classes. Yes, you get valuable nuggets to 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 learn how to be an actor and all these great things like the Stanislavski or, or Meisner, whatever you do. Right. But the most that you get out of it is your networking. Those people are going to be shooting films one day. Yep. Those people that see next to you on your right and your left are going to be the next Martin Scorsese. They are, they are the upcoming of Reef. And so when you're not out there marking yourself, you're not out there putting yourself out there, and then do everything, like you said, do everything you can get into, whether it's local theater or whether it's going down and doing a grad school uh, project at, at the local university. Yes, it doesn't pay at first, but your skill set needs to grow. It, it's not to a place where they can pay you those those checks yet um, that, right. you, that you one day want to get. Um, but the thing is, I guess, and, and the bottom line, I'll wrap with this, is that don't get frustrated in the failures yeah. And waiting and the overnight success. It doesn't happen that way for everybody. And you're not competing with anybody else but yourself. Mm. There's no time limit on this. If you want to be a lawyer, go to law school. You want to be a doctor, go to med school. You want to be an actor, just be. Just go out there and do it. And do it every chance you get. Take a camera out and see what you look like on film. And just do it and work on your skill set and then grow it. And it's going to get frustrating if you want to see yourself like you said, a benchmark. I think someone said that Jim Carrey wrote a check for himself for a million dollars when yeah. he first started acting. And then later he was able to cash it. That's great. I can't say that. In six years, I'm not there. So I can't put that benchmark on myself, but I can also say I'm better than I was six years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm also better than I was a month ago. And that's where I see myself. I'm looking at what my benchmarks are is is my personal success, not compared to well, he did it in six years. He got on a movie in in, in six months. Nope. Just go out there and be mm -hmm. and do and don't look around at others and compare and and don't worry about oh I'm starting late in life. I don't have a degree in this. I didn't go to Juilliard or actually sure. one. That's not the important thing right now. The important thing is be yourself and go out there and do it and do it as often as you can. Absolutely. I think the, you know, the, the important thing to know is that there's so many, there's so many, even uh, yourselves, and I'm sure there's hundreds upon thousands of other actors across the country, if not the world, you know, that have, that have just gotten that later start and it's never too late. And I think that's the important thing that, that just really as a, the film community, we need to stress to people, not even acting, directing. If you want to be a DP, if you want to produce, if you want to write, it doesn't matter. You know, if you love it, go out and do it. A stunt, yeah, you can be, I mean, yeah, you can be stunt man. I don't know how well that'd be if you were, depending on the age you were, but I mean, like, if you look at, um, we have, we have a list, we're researching some, you know, uh, Christoph Waltz was 51 when he got his big break, you know, James Gandolfini was 38, Alan Rickman was 46, um, God, who else was on there? Morgan, you had, Freeman. Yeah, Morgan Freeman was in his 50s, yeah, Judy Dench was 61, um, you know, so there's a lot of people that, you know, they had careers while they were doing stage work and commercial work. Um, and it, they weren't hitting the big time necessarily. Um, and it seems like the, you know, you guys, it seems like all of you within your first couple of years, you found, um, you know, pretty decent success, whether it be, um, you know, uh, for Vindication uh, or Fear the Walking Dead um, for, for Skeeter and Peggy or um, Carlton with all the commercials you've done, you've done there. Uh, and, and for what you and Shauna, you guys are doing the, uh, those international features. You know, it sounds like you guys have, have done a good job finding that success. So one of the last questions I want to close on is, for actors not in New York, actors not in LA, because those are typically the two main strongholds. I know between Austin, Chicago, Atlanta, Shreveport, and all these other places, they're always switching, you know, the popularity of the cities. Can you make a living being solely an actor in the state of Texas? And that's a question. That's a question. And it, it, Carlton, it looked like you were the only one that said you are solely doing acting, um, uh, or excuse me, you and Peggy are solely doing acting full time for let you. Me, let me qualify what you said. Let me, let me hear, yeah. if I'm hearing you correctly, because I may have a different answer for you. Then sure. you're, you're saying just in the border of Texas, can I make a living at this? No. 
out out outside of the outside of New York City or Los Angeles in America in the United States, can you make a living in any other city being an actor? Um, not not so much. I don't think so. You have to be able okay. to travel to those places to get there. But I I think that, sure. the, that I wanted to say this that don't move there to make it. If you can't make it where you are and then go out there as a, even a modicum success, like, okay, they're, they're auditioning now for this show in LA, go out there and audition for it and then make it on the show. If you can't do that from here, then it's three times or 10 times harder. If I can, if I can qualify sure. that, I don't know um, how to say that. Uh, I don't know the numbers exactly. But let's just say it's 10 times harder to move to LA and make it than it would be if you would just be a good Texas actor and get known for your craft and audition from here and then go out there and get booked. But just being in Texas, there's not even enough uh, production going on. If you landed something in everything, if you were a, a, a walk-on in everything or you got a, a, a even supporting role, you wouldn't make enough to, to survive unless you had very, very little bills. And, and you know, sure. again, and, and that, but if you have a family, I'll let know, but you can make a living as an actor and still live in Texas, but no, sure. you're going to work other places. Um, and that, and that does come. I mean, we, we travel all over to do this and in doing that, it's, it's a steady income. It's a steady check that continues to come in. And then of course, in this industry, we get uh, residuals and we get other things that help us out. Um, like through COVID, uh, I still had checks in the mailbox, so we were not sure. working. But there was still an income coming in during that time. But to say that to say in Texas itself, no. But to be a Texas-based actor and work, yes. But you've got to get to those other places. But don't move. Don't move. Please don't move there. You'll be frustrated in no time. Now, hard it is. It's a different game in New York and LA. It's a different it is. game. They're looking at different pedigrees that we don't look at here in Texas. So I I, I, I want to thank everybody for uh, jumping on this episode with us today. Unfortunately, we are running low on time and. Uh, it's been just such a pleasure. Um, a little game that we do like to play uh, before we before we go um, is for the, we typically like to ask our guests uh, if you guys have a uh, movie recommendation, maybe something you've seen recently, an all time favorite, uh, anything like it doesn't matter what it is. Um, just for our listeners for this week, uh, maybe they'll check it out, maybe they won't. Um, it can uh, it can star. An actor uh, who, just like yourself, started later on in life, or it can just be a movie you watched recently and you loved, or it can be one of your all-time favorites. It's really your call. Um, so I'll give you guys a moment to think. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with the panel here because uh, we're used to doing this on the fly. Um, Gary, any movie at all that pops into your head that you loved within the last during COVID? Throw it out there. What, what should our listeners listen uh, watch this week? Well, uh, in keeping with our theme of those that start late uh, with their um, acting careers, Alan Rickman started late, so I'm going to recommend... Stop get... taking my picks every week! <laughs> I'm, going to... <laughs> I'm going to recommend Galaxy Quest. Every week! Stop taking my picks! <laughs> now, Neil, I heard that. Can someone translate that for me, please? Uh, I think Neil said, keep taking my picture. Okay, it's okay, totally good. Fine. So, yeah, I think said uh, no. Galaxy Quest with <laughs> Alan Rickman is uh, Gary Elmore's original and first pick. Thank you. <laughs> Neil, what do you have? What do you got, Neil? Oh, I, I already pulled up 1999's <laughs> Galaxy Quest, so you're going to have to come back to me. <laughs> 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 uh, I'll, I'll go that that's fine that's fine um yeah uh, you know one that uh I'm, I'm just gonna have to say uh so brian cranston who we did mention he started on malcolm in the middle got his big break when he was 44 as you guys all of you did you know tim watley and seinfeld and did a bunch of other stuff in the 80s and 90s um but he did a fantastic film that i still to this day thought was robbed at the oscars as a lot of films are nowadays um but he did a film called trumbo about um uh one of the writers who was blacklisted for being, uh, uh, for apparently being a uh, communist back in the fifties uh, uh, during the uh, uh, writers, excuse me, the um, uh, blacklist. So fantastic movie. We did a fantastic job. Got nominated for Best Actor. And yeah, that'll be my pick this week. Trumbo. Neil, we'll go back to you. All right. Well, since we're having a circle back to me. Keeping in the theme, uh, I am a big fan of Kathy Bates, and uh, one of her big, big starring roles would be Misery. Uh, you know, people are quarantined in their house, 
Might as well get a good, nice horror movie of someone stuck in a house. Very good. <laughs> nothing, nothing makes us more at ease. <laughs> a good uh, original uh, pick, Neil. Yeah, a <laughs> good original yeah. pick. I, I, I wish you would have gone with Galaxy Quest, but you know, I guess Gary. I know, uh, that would slip my mind. That's a, it happens. <laughs> uh, uh, let's just start down the road again. Uh, Skeeter, what about you? Y'all gonna laugh, but I am. I can watch it every day. Uh, Tombstone. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Best Western ever. Just saying. And not a bad pizza. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Horrible pizza, in fact. <laughs> Horrible pizza. Uh, Carlton, how about you? Um, well, I just saw this movie, and uh, it was recommended, and I, and I actually like it. I'm a Will Ferrell uh, fan. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of uh, my acting kind of patterns after him a little bit, so I, I like mm. Will Ferrell. Anyway, it's a uh, Eurovision. And, uh, yes. <laughs> Just oh watched God. that recently. <laughs> Hilarious. One of my picks. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we got two people. My, two people stealing picks. Oh yeah, I actually <laughs> love that movie. I just something about it was just enough of that uh, that humor, and then of course you know a, a sappy love story. But I thought it was great. That was well done and well made, and uh, of course a lot of a lot of big names in it. Um, you know, uh, especially uh, European descent. All these guys that were in the little cameos. But anyway, yeah. that's my pick. That's good. All right. Perfect. Well, I am a huge Done. Keanu Reeves fan because he's just an amazing person in general. But I would say any of the John Wick movies, definitely. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> anyways, guys, we are all out of time for this week. Oh, Johnny, I want to what, thank... what, what's your pick? I already told you mine. Tr- Trumbo. Oh, yeah, you did. I just didn't. I don't listen to you, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't listen to me, but you decided to ask me what my pick was and you don't listen to me? Well, you know, kind of yeah, cool. I care about you. I oh, want you to be successful. Okay. Do you? It, it sounds like you want me to fail in every aspect of life. Whatever. <laughs> uh, once again, we want to thank uh, Skeeter, Skeeter Jenkins, Carlton Cottle, uh, Shona Talked, and Peggy Scott. Thank you guys so much for being here with us. It was a pleasure having you. Uh, and good luck in all of your uh, future endeavors. Stay safe during COVID. And uh, for Gary, Neil, and myself here at I Don't Give a Flick, that's a wrap. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Stay classy. Thank you for tuning in to Leadfeather Productions' podcast of I Don't Give a Flick. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast so that you never miss an episode. Podcasts are available on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and everywhere podcasts are hosted. I Don't Give a Flick is hosted and produced by Johnny Blackburn, Gary Elmore, and Neil Riley. Executive producer, Johnny Blackburn. Technical director, editor, and audio mixer, Gary Elmore. I Don't Give a Flick is a Leadfeather production. Copyright Leadfeather Productions 2020.